The Tinderbox by Hans Christian Andersen A soldier came marching along the high road, saying, left, right, left, right. He was carrying a backpack and a sword he had been to war and was now going home. As he walked on, he saw a very scary looking old witch in the road. Her bottom lip hung quite low on her chest, and she stopped and said, Good evening, soldier. You have a very nice sword and a big knapsack, and you are a real soldier, so you can have as much money as you want. Thanks, old witch, said the soldier. Do you see that big tree? asked the witch, pointing to a tree next to them. Well, it's pretty hollow on the inside. And you have to climb to the top to find a hole through which you can let yourself down into the tree a long way. I will tie a rope around your body so that I can pull you back up when you call out to me. But what do I do down there in the tree? asked the soldier. Get money. She said, You must know that when you reach the ground under the tree, you will be in a large hall lit by three hundred lamps. You will then see three doors that are easy to open because the keys are in all of the locks. When you walk through the first of these doors and into the first room, you will see a large chest in the middle of the floor, and a dog sitting on it with eyes as big as teacups. But you don't have to be afraid of him at all. I'll give you my blue and white check apron, which you'll spread out on the floor and then grab the dog and put him on. You can then open the chest and take out as many pence as you want. They are only copper pence, but if you would rather have silver money, you have to go into the second chamber. Here you will find another dog with eyes as big as mill wheels, but don't let that worry you. Place him on my apron, and then take any amount of money you want. But if you like gold best, go to the third room, where there is another chest full of it. The dog that is sitting on this chest is very scary, his eyes are as big as a tower. But don't mind him. If he is also on my apron, he can't hurt you, and you can take as much gold from the chest as you want. This is not a bad story, the soldier said, but what am I to give you, you old witch? For, of course, you don't mean to tell me all this for no reason. No, said the witch. But I don't want a single penny, just promise to bring me an old box of tinder that my grandmother left behind the last time she went down there. Very well, I swear. Now wrap the rope around my body. Here it is, said the witch, and here is my blue checked apron. As soon as the rope was tied. The soldier climbed up the tree and lowered himself through the hollow to the ground below. As the witch had told him, he found a large hall with hundreds of lit lamps. He then opened the first door. Ah, the dog was sitting there with eyes as big as teacups, staring at him. You're a pretty guy. The soldier said as he grabbed him and put him on the witch's apron while he filled his pockets from the chest with as many pieces as they would hold. Then he closed the lid, put the dog back on it, and walked into another chamber. And sure enough, there was the dog sitting with eyes as big as mill wheels. You shouldn't look at me that way said the soldier you'll make your eyes water and then he put him on the apron and opened the chest but when he saw how much silver money it had he quickly threw away all the coppers he had taken and only put silver in his pockets and backpack then he went into the third room 
where the dog was really horrible. His eyes were really as big as towers, and they turned around and around in his head like wheels. Good morning, said the soldier, touching his cap. He had never seen such a dog in his life. But when he looked at him more closely, he decided he had been polite enough. So he put him on the floor and opened the chest. What a lot of gold there was! Enough to buy all the sugar sticks from the sweet stuff women, all the tin soldiers, whips, and rocking horses in the world, or even the whole town itself. There was, indeed, a huge amount. So, the soldier threw away all the silver money he had taken and filled his pockets and knapsack with gold instead. Not just his pockets and knapsack, but also his cap and boots, so that he could barely walk. He was now very rich, so he put the dog back on the chest, closed the door, and called up through the tree, Now pull me out. You old witch, do you have the tinder box? Asked the witch. No I declare, I quite forgot it. So he went back and got the tinder box. The witch then pulled him up out of the tree, and he stood back on the high road with gold in his pockets, his knapsack, his cap, and his boots. What are you going to do with that tinder box? Asked the soldier. That's nothing to you, said the witch. You have the money now give me the tinder box. Tell you what, the soldier said, if you don't tell me what you're going to do with it, I'll draw my sword and cut off your head. No, replied the witch. The soldier immediately cut off her head and she lay on the ground. Then, he tied all his money to her apron. He threw it on his back like a bundle, put the tinder box in his pocket, and walked to the nearest town. It was a very nice town, and he stayed at the best inn. For dinner, he ordered all of his favorite foods because he was rich and had plenty of money. The man's servant who cleaned his boots thought they were pretty worn out for such a wealthy man to wear since he hadn't yet bought new ones. The next day, though, he bought some nice clothes and boots, and our soldier soon became known as a fine gentleman. People came to see him and told him all about the town's wonders and how beautiful the king's daughter, the princess, was. Where can I meet her? Asked the soldier. She can't be seen at all, they said. She lives in a big copper castle surrounded by walls and towers. No one but the king himself can go in or out, because a prophecy says she will marry a common soldier, and the king can't stand to think about that. I would love to see her, thought the soldier, but he couldn't get permission to do so. But he had a very good time. He went to the theater, drove in the king's garden, and gave a lot of money to the poor, which was very kind of him because he remembered what it was like to be poor in the past. He was now rich, had nice clothes and many friends who all said he was a nice guy and a real gentleman, which made him very happy. But his money wouldn't last forever, and as he spent and gave away a lot every day and didn't get any more, he ended up with only two shillings left. So he had to leave his nice rooms and live in a small room under the roof where he had to clean his own boots and even fix them with a large needle. None of his friends came to see him because there were too many stairs to climb. One dark night, he didn't even have a penny to buy a candle. Suddenly, 
He remembered that there was a piece of candle stuck in the tinder box that he had brought from the old tree with the witch's help. He found the tinder box, but as soon as he struck a few sparks with the flint and steel, the door flew open and the dog with eyes as big as teacups, who he had seen while down in the tree, stood in front of him and asked, What orders, master? Hello, said the soldier. Well, this is a nice tinder box. If it brings me all I want, bring me some money, he told the dog. He was gone in a moment and soon came back with a big bag of coppers in his pocket. The soldier soon found out how useful the tinder box was. If he hit the flint once, the dog who sat on the chest of copper money came out. If he hit it twice. The dog from the chest of silver money came out, and if he hit it three times, the dog with eyes like towers who watched over the gold came out. The soldier now had a lot of money, so he went back to his nice home and put on his nice clothes. His friends saw him again and thought just as much of him as before. After a while, he started to think it was very strange that no one could see the princess. Everyone says she's very beautiful, he thought to himself, but what good is that if she's locked up in a copper castle with so many towers? Is there any way I can get to see her? Stop, where's my tinder box? Then he turned on a light, and in a moment, the dog with eyes as big as teacups stood in front of him. It's midnight, the soldier said, but I would love to see the princess, if only for a moment. The dog disappeared right away, and before the soldier could even look around, he came back with the princess. She was sleeping on the dog's back. She looked so pretty that everyone who saw her would know she was a real princess. The soldier was such a true soldier that he couldn't help but kiss her. The dog then ran back with the princess, but the next morning, while having breakfast with the king and queen, she told them about a strange dream she had had about a dog and a soldier in which she had ridden on the dog's back and been kissed by the soldier. That is a very pretty story, said the queen. So, the next night, one of the old ladies of the court was sent to watch by the princess's bed to find out if it really was a dream or if it was something else. The soldier really wanted to see the princess again, so he sent the dog out again in the night to get her and run as fast as he could with her. But the old lady put on water shoes and ran after him as fast as he did. She found that he had carried the princess into a big house. She thought it would help her remember the place if she drew a big cross on the door with a piece of chalk. Then she went home to bed, and the dog soon followed with the princess. But when he saw that a cross had been drawn on the door of the soldier's house, he took another piece of chalk and drew crosses on all the doors in the town so that the lady-in-waiting might not be able to find the right one. Early the next morning, the king and queen went with the lady and all the servants of the house to find out where the princess had been. There it is said the king when they came to the first door with a cross on it. No, my dear husband, it must be that one, said the queen, pointing to a second door with a cross on it. And here's one, and here's another. They all said, pointing to the crosses on all the doors. 
so they thought it would be pointless to search any further. But the queen was a very smart woman who could do much more than just ride in a carriage. She took her big gold scissors and cut a piece of silk into squares to make a cute little bag. She put buckwheat flour in this bag and tied it around the princess's neck. Then she cut a small hole in the bag so that the flower could fall out as the princess walked. During the night, the dog came back and carried the princess on his back. He ran with her to the soldier, who loved her very much and wished he were a prince so he could marry her. The dog didn't notice that the flower ran out of the bag all the way from the castle wall to the soldier's house and even up to the window where he was with the princess. So, in the morning, the king and queen found out where their daughter had been, and the soldier was taken away and put in jail. Oh, how dark and unpleasant it was as he sat there, and the people told him. Tomorrow you will be hanged. It wasn't very good news, and he had left the tinder box at the inn. In the morning, he could see through the iron grating of the small window how people were rushing out of town to see him hanged. He could hear the drums beating and see the soldiers marching. Everybody ran out to look at them. A boy wearing a leather apron and slippers ran by so fast that one of his slippers flew off and hit the wall where the soldier was sitting looking through the iron grating. Hello, you shoemaker's boy. You don't need to be in such a hurry shouted the soldier to him there won't be anything to see until i get there but if you run to the house where i've been living and bring me my tinder box i'll give you four shillings but you have to put your best foot forward the shoemaker's boy liked the idea of getting the four shillings so he ran very fast to get the tinder box and gave it to the soldier. Now, let's see what happens. Outside of the town, a big gibbet had been built, and soldiers and several thousand people stood around it. The king and queen were sitting on beautiful thrones across from the judges and the rest of the council. The soldier was already standing on the ladder. But as they were about to put the rope around his neck, he said that a poor criminal's innocent request was often granted before he was killed. He really wanted to smoke a pipe because it would be the last one he would ever smoke. The king couldn't say no, so the soldier took his tinder box and set it on fire once, twice and three times. In an instant, all the dogs stood up, including the one with eyes as big as teacups, the one with eyes as big as mill wheels, and the one with eyes as big as towers. The soldier cried out, Help me now so I don't get hung. And the dogs jumped on the judges and all the council members. They grabbed one by the legs and another by the nose and threw them many feet into the air. When they hit the ground, they were torn to pieces. Don't touch me, said the king. But the biggest dog grabbed him and the queen and threw them after the other dogs. Then the soldiers and everyone else were scared and shouted, Good soldier. You shall be our king, and you shall marry the beautiful princess. So, they put the soldier in the king's carriage, the three dogs ran in front and yelled hurrah, the little boys whistled through their fingers, and the soldiers raised their arms. The princess came out of the copper castle and became queen which was very exciting for her. The wedding celebrations went on for a whole week, and the dogs sat at the table and just stared.
Never miss a video subscribe to my YouTube channel learn English very quickly hit the bell icon for notifications thank you for watching.